Hey guys, sorry for the uh, shortage in videos. Oh, I was on vacation. Uh, I've got a lot of projects going on right now. Um, some tough ones uh, and some easy ones. But uh, I've got actually. I don't think it was this drill, um, which, you know, these little handheld 12 volt drills hook up just fine to, uh, 12 volt batteries that you can use as capacitors. Um, oh, here's a little project I'm working on for you guys. This has, uh, the diodes taken out of it, bypass the diodes. The three coil wires. Actually, here. You know what? I got another one taken apart. Let me just show you real quick. Okay. Same alternator. You, uh, if you look, you got a copper connection here. See, see. Same alternator. Same one. Okay. Uh, the only thing that can ever go wrong with any of these alternators uh, is. Uh, these two little brushes that you got right here uh, This one and this one, but here's your uh, stator coil right here if You'll notice it's got three separate wires on it and those three wires go to these three poles right here that have a diode on each side and it just it's a, it rectifies the uh, the current from the alternating current and regulates it uh, down to a certain amount of voltage uh, which is, you know, 12 to 14 volts, uh, depending on the speed, but you only need a certain amount to keep your car running and keep everything in your car running, and so it adjusts all that by adding a little bit of direct current to the two field wires, which are actually your, your brushes on here, uh, and these brushes on here will, it's got, you know, one connection here, and then one connection on the on the side of it and that goes to your center coil in here and that's just one wire that's wrapped around and around and around a whole bunch of times one side of it's connected to this and one side of it's connected to this and they connect those by this one and this one so that's your inside your field wires so if you put a direct current voltage to this it will while spinning be projected off of here into these coils right here. Uh, these coils with the uh, the steel right here will actually absorb it, transfer it into these coils. There's three coils here, three wraps here, three wraps here, but you get the picture. You got three coil wires, uh, one side of it, you know, it's, it's pretty simple pretty simple, uh, pretty basic. I mean, I, this thing would probably pull out if I give it a little, work it a little bit, it'd probably come right out. Yeah, it moved actually. Yep, there, there it went. But yeah, look guys, that's, that's it right there. There's your coils. But that right there will put off three separate charges. Uh, one of them is actually, actually the way it works, um, you get, let's see, let me think about it the way mine is set up. Uh, you get a strong current from this one. Uh, this is your main. Uh, you get a little bit of current from this one, which is your... Uh, your neutral and then this this one is I think your ground uh, just depends on which way you're flowing your power through here so you want to put a diode on here uh, and then hook up the negative to the negative and the positive to the positive or you know what I mean but this is also a uh, ground wire I just stuck on here because it used to go to the battery and if you were to put voltage to this one right now have it together and turn it it would put off direct current through here. But if I put a, you know, 
12, 14 volts direct current here, it would put off enough uh, here to actually weld with, um, with just this one alternator. Uh, they're that strong. And the reason why people don't understand that, you know, those little bitty wires can't handle that much. Well, they're not handling that much. It's already being induced in it. And copper your, is a ferrous material. So the charge goes all the way through inside up to the outside edge of the copper. Not like aluminum where the current, the electricity runs on the outside of aluminum. It doesn't go through the middle of the aluminum wire. Uh, which has got a, you know, good, lot of, a lot of good properties in aluminum and stuff. Uh, I've been working on my car. Like I said, I had to fix the alternator in it. Uh, which, by fixing an alternator in your car, uh, only means either cleaning these two brushes, uh, or, well, cleaning these two brushes. Unless your rectifier needs to be cleaned, or your diodes might go out on that every 20 years. But I don't want to waste too much of y'all's time. Uh, I did take a small drill, and I hooked it up to this generator head right here. Uh, and it turned it fine, but I only got half the voltage out of it. So just a handheld drill gave me half the power to run my house. Now, if I couldn't charge a 12-volt battery to run that drill with to turn this, then I would be an idiot. You guys might want to rewind that and think about what I just said a whole bunch of times. I turned this 3,500-watt generator head... Okay, turned, I put my own shaft from here into the middle so that this turns. It turns this shaft and it has, uh oh, coils on it, identical just like this. Okay, these two things are hooked to those two coils, these two things are hooked to these two coil wires. Look here. Got three poles. Have three coils coming off of. What's the difference between a generator, an alternator, and a motor? Like I've told you guys many other times, watch my other video. Uh, you can take an electronic speed controller and turn this into a motor without any modifications. You can use it just like this and just put more voltage to your field, your to your field, your field wire that turns your rotor and it will throw more charge off of here and amplify it even more and you can collect it right there. But anyways, I, I don't want this to, like I said, I don't want it to be too long of a video here. I've got some bigger things that I'm working on. I've got to get my other motor put on here and stuff but car troubles and if it ain't one thing it's another and the dog's chewing up all my this trash and I uh well you guys know how it is